be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Please be seated. Psalm 112, verse 1, all the way to verse 2. Say, Praise you, the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth and the generation of the upright shall be blessed. That is the meaning of the program tonight. We are the seed of the righteous. In the life of our Father in the Lord, we see the practicality of covenant. That you are blessed and your seed after you. Not one, not two, not three. The last one wrote two books recently. And, and I have read one and called her to tell her what I learned from what I read. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have in our midst today Now, let me give you a background. Some people think that when someone like our father in the Lord is a bishop and a pastor and overseer of a, of a ministry, he insisted that his children must be pastors. That was far from the case. He said, look, whatever you feel God is leading you to do with your life, just go ahead and do it and just be sure you're in line with God's will. And then they came, first one, second one, that God is leading them into ministry. He said, are you sure? Go and pray about it. After prayer, I return. He said, all right, write your vision. What, is, what vision is God calling you to achieve? <laughs> that is convince me that you are called. Not that I am your father and I'm a pastor and then you say you want to be pastor. Convince me that you are called. So he had to be convinced and passed through the system and prove yourself. And, and it was proved. The first one was posted to London and erupted the place. Bought properties in a short time worth millions of pounds. Next one posted South Africa erupted the place. Church galloped. And that is what we have here today. So I want you to have hope that no devil can tamper with your seed. Yeah. Apart from the impact of the word that will come, it is the practicality of what you heard yesterday about what is your portion and that of your lineage. Am I communicating? And so, I'd like you to open your heart. Um, the young man that is about to minister to us today is a proven, he has preached in a um, Shiloh program, which is watched all over the world many times. He's resident pastor of Faith Tabernacle. That is, if Papa travels anywhere in the world, he can hold the church, preach five times on Sunday with the same effect and the same impact. And so, you have seen Abraham here before. You are about to see Isaac. And Israel. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. No assumptions. Very humble. It's an understatement. We interacted severally. Impeccable humility. So get, get your mindset. But before I go on, Pastor David Oyedeko Jr. is here with us. His immediate junior brother, who is also Pastor Isaac Oyedeko, is here with him. Double barrel, and then architect David Abiyoye Jr. is also here with us. That is this. He he came along with his brothers. That is Bishop Abiyoye's son, first son. And um, so so as to be sure that um, the, the company is very perfect. And then he is here with his armor bearer here. Great, 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 great time. David is practicing architecture. Okay, right. And so. With the joy of Jesus, King of Kings, you stand on your feet. 
as to receive the ministry of Pastor David Oyede for Junior. Shall we lift our hands to heaven and give God thanks this evening for the privilege we have to be in his presence again tonight to receive his word. Will you give God thanks? Let's appreciate him. Let's glorify his name. His word of praise. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Celebrate the faithfulness of God. Thank him and thank him for all of the blessings you have received the first day, the second and here we are on the third day will you give him thanks give the glory unto his name father we thank you we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we give you adoration now would you ask god to give you an encounter tonight by his word lord as your word comes my way grant me an encounter from heaven let this night be my night of change let it be my night of transformation let every red sea path on my behalf cause me to walk into destiny tonight will you lift your voice and make sure god is hearing the voice of your supplication as you present your case unto him lord i'm here for an encounter an encounter with your word that will establish my change of level thank you father blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name we have prayed father tonight we are grateful for the privilege we have to be in your presence to receive your word we ask lord that you will grant each one of us an encounter with you an encounter that will establish our change of level we give you the praise the glory the honor and the adoration in jesus precious name we are praying somebody believe say loud amen. amen give jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence hallelujah praise the lord i want to appreciate god sincerely for this privilege to be here tonight as part of the destiny recovery convention and i want to celebrate god's servant dr paul Enenche, for this great opportunity hallelujah i've told him before in the year 2006 i was given a tip of his and i heard his words and from that time, I've not stopped hearing his words. All of these years, hallelujah. God has used them in diverse ways. I know in many lives, but also particularly in my own life. Not only from a distance, but also he has given us the privilege to have proximity. He has given counsel, guidance, continuously protecting, shepherding, helping, directing, and I pray that God's hand will remain great upon your life, sir. Thank you also, mommy. God bless you. I appreciate this great opportunity. Tonight, we are going to go into God's word. The theme of this convention is highway in the Red Sea. Way to destiny. And tonight, I want to speak briefly on following the highways of God. And I'm going to read from the book of Isaiah chapter 55 as our principal text tonight. And we're going to go through a number of verses here. And then we'll get into what God has for us tonight. Isaiah 55 beginning from verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfied not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and will make an everlasting covenant with you, and open even the sure mercies of David. Behold, 
I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee. Because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he had glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to spring forth and board, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto i sent it the lord bless the reading of his word i'd like us to understand this night as we go through his word first of all that the scripture is clear that god has his own highways the ways of god are not the ways of men and the ways of god are described as higher than the ways of men in the book of habakkuk chapter 3 verse 6 the bible is clear in making us to understand he said that the everlasting mountains were scattered and he, the hills did bow his ways are everlasting so may i serve a god of ways now these parts are called old parts or old ways in scriptures jeremiah 6 verse 16 the bible makes us understand there he says seek he said stand in the ways and see and ask for the old parts wherein is the good way and walk therein and as you do you will find rest for your souls although these ways may be old it's important to recognize that they are not known to all in fact the ways of god are secret to most job chapter 28 the bible tells us in verse 7 down to verse 11 it says there is a path which no fowl knoweth and which the vultures eye had not seen it said the lion's whelp has not trodden on it neither the fierce lion passed by it he put it for his hand upon the rock and overturned the mountains by the roots he said he cut it out rivers among the rock his eyes yet every precious thing and he binded the flood from overflowing and the thing that is hid he bringeth it to light so the ways of god are the old ways but they are the hidden ways they are the hidden ways and the moment an individual begins to discover the ways of god and walk in the reality of it it terminates every unrest jesus said come unto me all of you that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest come and learn of me he said for i'm meek and i'm lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls so the pathway to rest are the highways of God. It's important to also recognize tonight that the ways of God cut through impossibilities of life. The ways of God, they cut through the impossibilities of life. Psalm 77 and verse 19. The Bible makes us to understand there. It said the way of God is in the sea and the path is in the great waters. Thy footsteps are not known the sea represents a barrier but inside the barrier there is a way with god for somebody here tonight i don't know what barrier you may be facing but inside that barrier there is a way with god if somebody believe it say louder amen and that is why the bible said in first corinthians 10 13 it said there they had no temptation no situation no circumstance no resistance no obstacle no mountain no no oppression taking you but such as is common to man he said there but in that same temptation there is a way so me there was a way louder like you mean it there is a way within every resistance there is a way with god when god was leading the children of israel out of egypt the bible said god told moses take them towards the red sea 
Why? Make Pharaoh think they are trapped. Let them see a barrier behind them and a resistance in front of them. And inside that trap, I will show you that there is a way. So it doesn't matter what you are confronted with, what is oppressing you, what is afflicting you, what is tormenting you, there is a way out. Tell me there is a way out. Israel looked and the Bible said, they cried unto the Lord and they looked at Moses. Did you bring us to die here? The Red Sea behind, Pharaoh's army in front, but God told them, go forward. There is something you cannot see, but it is there. There is a road that is, that is blindfolded to you, but it is there. And tonight I pray that whatever represents any blindfold, any blockage to the way of God be taken off your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. It's also important to note tonight that the greatest need of the last days is the teaching of, of his ways. Is the greatest need of the last days. Isaiah chapter 2, the Bible tells us, verse 1 to 3, it said, this is the word of the Lord to Isaiah concerning Judah and Jerusalem. He said, and it shall come to pass in what days? In the last days. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established at the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. He said, and many people shall go and shall say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And what will he do? He will teach us his ways. We're listening tonight about the various nations that are represented here, various nations connected from everywhere. Why are they coming? Why are they connecting? To be taught his ways. Because the ways of God are the greatest need of the last days. And the reason is that the most complicated issues of life will emerge in the last days. My, Malachi chapter 4, the Bible tells us verse 1 and verse 2. It said that behold the day cometh that shall burn like an open. All the proud and ye all that do wickedly, they shall be as stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them, saith the Lord of hosts. It shall leave them neither root nor branch. And when it comes, he said, those that fear my name, those ones who have discovered my ways, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the storm. That is same environment, different experience. All as a product of the discovery of his ways. I don't know what may be happening around where you came from but your experience is ordained to be different and that will be your experience in the name of Jesus Christ and this is why we must understand that these last days you and I must be passionate about the pursuit of the discovery of the ways of God and following those ways in order to arrive at our destination Zechariah chapter 8 makes us understand that in the last days 10 men will take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, a believer, and say, we'll go with you because we have heard that God is with you. The ways of God will decorate the saints of God in the last days. And somebody here will be among those decorated. If you are the one I'm talking about, say louder, amen. I said you are the one I'm talking about, say louder, amen. Therefore, we must know what it takes to discover and to follow God's path on the way to destiny. And that's what we're going to look at tonight, principally what it takes to finding the ways of God. So let's look quickly at finding the ways of God. How do I find it? If it is the greatest need, how do I locate it? How can I discover his ways and walk in the reality of it? We'll look at a few things here quickly tonight as we go into God's word. Number one, his way is in his voice. His way is in his voice. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God the voice of God the leading of his spirit is the pathway to the advantage of the believer in the last days the Bible says in the book of first Timothy 4 verse 1 it said the spirit speaketh expressly that in the last days perilous times will come so the, the voice of the spirit is the alarm bell for your escape from the hardship of the last days the voice of the spirit that is why those who hear god don't suffer with men those who know how to hear from god they don't suffer with men their case is usually separated and distinguished from others 
the bible makes us to understand this the Quran 4 and verse 6 it says there it is not by power neither is it by might but it is by my spirit said the lord the spirit of god and the voice of his spirit is the avenue for our escape of the difficulties of the last days somebody believe me say loud amen so we must come to understand tonight that if you are going to discover his ways his ways are in his voice those who know the voice of god they naturally discover the ways of god the ways of god are dictated by the voice of god if you look at the entire episode between israel and moses the bible makes it very clear to us you keep hearing and the lord said to moses and the lord said to moses the people began to cry before the red sea and god said to moses why are you crying to me go forward and as they went forward the, the sea began to part and they walked on dry ground by the voice of the lord my prayer tonight is that whatever represents a blockage to anyone's hearing tonight that blockage is removed in the name of jesus this is why the cry of christ to the last day church is any man that has an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches revelations 2 29 so the voice of the spirit is the advantage of the believer in the last day when you can hear what others cannot hear you will escape what others can't escape you see your pathway is naturally located by the voice of god your safety in difficult times is located in the voice of god if you look at every scriptural story of escape you will discover that those stories were rooted in thus said the lord here comes paul trapped in a boat and the boat was trapped in a storm in acts chapter 27 and the bible makes us understand the storm was raging and for 14 solid days they didn't see the sun or the stars they couldn't tell whether it was day or night but here comes paul the apostle saying an angel of the lord stood before me last night and said unto me don't be troubled because there will be not one loss of one life not the hair of one man will be lost in the sea the storm may be raging but the security was in the voice for somebody here tonight i don't know what storm may be raging around your life around your destiny around your family around your around your ministry around your business but your escape is in the voice and that voice will be opened up to you tonight somebody believe me say louder amen somebody believe me say louder amen you believe me say the loudest amen his way is in his voice his way is in his voice number two his way is in his word his way is in his word psalm 119 verse 105 it said thy word O lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path in other words if i will know where i am going i will know it by his word if i will get to where i am going i will get there by his word that is why those who have no priority for the word have no destiny in his plan the plan of god is channeled by the word of god those who locate his word will naturally be able to follow his plan the word of god is the custodian of the secrets of god inside that book called the bible are treasures hidden that generations have never seen inside of that book called the bible are the plans and the secrets of god that many have not seen paul speaking in the book of ephesians chapter 3 said there beginning from verse 3 down to verse 5 he said that as he said whereby when ye read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ he said how by revelation he made known to me that mystery that when you read you will understand it and in verse 5 it tells us there that these mysteries are the things that in ages past were not known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit so the scriptures are loaded with things that have been buried from ages past and they are available for you and i in order to order our steps to the place of destiny 
no wonder the bible says in the book of some in the book of isaiah 29 verse 11 and verse 12 he said there he said the vision of all has become like the words that are in a book that is sealed it is given to one that is learned said read it he said i cannot because it is sealed it is given to another one and said read it and he said i cannot because i am a lend the meaning of that is this your education is not your advantage neither is your miseducation your disadvantage god is saying the book is locked except he opens it up to you and that is why i pray that for everyone here tonight the book shall be opened in the name of jesus and it's important to know that the opening of the book was secured by redemption revelations 5 the bible tells us beginning from verse 4 it tells us there it said and i wept much because none was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon he said and one of the elders said unto me weep not behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david he has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof you know when jesus died one of the things that took place was the tearing of the veil and that was your entry into the mysteries of god therefore any fake veil from the devil seeking to block your access to the world and the light therein i decree destroy tonight in the name of jesus if somebody believe me say loud amen it's very important for us to understand that you see god put a veil that kept man from the holies of holies but the veil of god was torn by redemption whatever is blocking your entrance now is a veil of the devil is somebody getting it because the bible said we all with open face not some but all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of god we are changed so it is what you see that determines what you become and what you see is at the mercy of your entrance into the secret place where the veil is torn apart i pray tonight that after this encounter your hunger your passion your appetite for the word of god will be triggered to another dimension in the name of jesus and from this night onward you will begin to see him i said you will begin to see him i said you will begin to see him you will begin to see him in the name of jesus his way is in his word his way is in his word number three his way is in his house if you are going to find the ways of god you must find the voice of god you must find the word of god and you must find the house of god the bible says in the book of psalm 77 and verse 13 it says there thy way is in the sanctuary the ways of god are in the house of god the, because the house of god is the center of illumination let me ask you a question there are things you have never heard that you heard since tuesday and you heard it because you are in the house of god there are things you have never seen that you heard, that you saw since tuesday and you saw it because you are in the house of god psalm 73 and verse 17 the bible tells us there it said then when i entered into the house of god or the sanctuary then understood i i was trying to understand it but i was not in the place of understanding then understood i did you not hear god say to jeremiah go to the potter's house i want to talk to you i can't talk to you here go there there are things god will not say to you at home don't deceive yourself there are things god will not show you at home don't tempt yourself it is the house of god that is the custodian of the way of god and i pray that tonight whatever looks like a blackout to any way that is in front of you i declare it torn apart in the name of jesus if you believe it say loud amen but we must understand that if you are going to make much at all out of the way of god it is not just attending once in a while those that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the court of our god they shall be fat and flourishing to show that the lord is upright and there is no unrighteousness in him what is plantedness 
two descriptions one talks about dedication to service dedication to service there are things god will only show the dedicated and why do we say planting talks about dedication to service the bible tells us in the book of john chapter 12 verse 23 to 20, 26 he said the time for the son of man to be glorified has come but except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die it abides alone but if it dies it will bring forth much fruit he said he that loveth his life shall lose it the one that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal if any man serve me like that let him follow me and where i am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor so the house of god is the place of your dedication to service your planting to service you are there for function that is why it is abnormal to be a decoration in god's house where you simply appear and disappear where you simply come and go where your presence is not felt and your absence is not missed simply because of an absence of input the house of god can only be maximized by those who are planted therein and you get planted by service somebody understand that say loud amen. amen but beyond the planting for service there is also the plantedness of continuous presence in other words a tree that you saw yesterday will still be where you left it that time is planted is stable is settled he has taken root downwards and is bearing fruit upwards seasonal attendees never make much of the house of god it is those who you find every day you find them day after day week after week suddenly god begins to show them his covenant if you want to see the best of god remain planted in the house of god david was so addicted to god's house that he said how amiable are thy tabernacles it is better for me to be a doorkeeper in the house of god than to dwell in the tents of wickedness it was also david that said god has more pleasure in his house than in all the tents of israel so the best of god is located in the house of god that is why i believe that for every one of us that is here tonight in all the various locations viewing and everywhere connected to this service i see the best of god being unveiled to you in the name of jesus if somebody believe me say louder amen i said somebody believe me say louder amen so if you want to find his ways find his voice find his word find his house what are the requirements for discovering the way of god i want us to see a few things quickly here tonight number one a hunger and a thirst for god remember what we read in the book of isaiah 55 it told us that the ways of god are higher than the ways of men and it start by telling us he said all of you that hunger and thirst come to the waters so invitation to the way of god is by hunger and thirst if nothing can quench your hunger you will discover his way if nothing can satisfy your thirst you will discover his way but let me say this tonight it will help us many things that people call hunger is not hunger it is simply desire a desire can be quenched in other words you can want something and desire determine you don't want it again but hunger cannot be quenched the question i will ask you is this when was the last time you were so hungry physically that you became unhungry you stopped being hungry the only solution to hunger is what you hunger for which is food the only answer to test is what you test for so if you are really hungry for his way the only thing that will end the hunger is discovering the way if you are really hung if you are really tested to discover the only thing that will quench the test is the discovery of his way if you can be quenched without the discovery what you had was a desire but anyone that tests let him come anyone that is hungry let him come if he comes with that qualification he will not end without his without reaching his destination 
so we must recognize that it starts with a thirst a hunger lord where is it that you want me to take what road do you want me to go what avenue do you want me to take we must stop going by consensus of others and by direction of him it is only when you go by divine direction that you enjoy that you enjoy divine distinction so we must go by his direction the direction of god and that comes by hunger and thirst somebody believes say loud amen i said somebody believes say loud amen and if you want to see an, an example of hunger and thirst all you need to do is see somebody like god servant dr paul in Inche, a man of consistent hunger the one thing that is very very clear about him is the hunger that he has that's the one thing that i have continuously seen in him and it doesn't go down it seems to keep going up it seems to get more intense rather than it be to be doused by what he sees as result it gets more horrific by what he sees as far as result is concerned so he sees something and then begins to desire to go deeper the hunger is continuously there so the way is never lost if you are not going to miss road then you must remain permanently hungry consistently hungry somebody say i saw a revelation yesterday what about today somebody say god spoke to me last week how about this week you see the hunger must be consistent one thing about moses you saw in scriptures as he led the children of israel was the voice of god was never far from him and he remained hungry for it when it seemed like he would not hear something he would go to a mountain for 40 days to demonstrate his hunger between the age of 80 and 120 40 days with god god had to descend and say my son what is it he said now i want you to talk to me show me your way and he began to show it to him by reason of hunger he discovered it my prayer tonight is that any kind of false satisfaction that may be plaguing anyone in life and destiny tonight will be the termination of it forever yeah. you believe it say loud amen yeah. number two requirement is attention or priority for the word attention or priority for the word isaiah 55 and verse 3 the bible said unto us there it said incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live so we must have a priority for the words proverbs 4 verse 20 to 22 he said my son in attend to my word and incline your ear to my sins pay attention to god's word let the word of god remain a priority for you you see the difference between moses and israel was moses took time with the word and the word showed him god's ways israel took time with the acts the act never show you the way the way is in the word your priority for the word is what gives you command of the acts that is why if you can see what others before you have seen you will command what they command it is all a matter of discovery and that discovery is a product of commitment or attention to the word may your appetite be quickened tonight number three is commitment to a life of holiness the way of god are for those who are committed to demonstrating the righteousness of christ the bible says in that book of isaiah 55 verse 7 it says there let the wicked forsake his way so wickedness is a way it's going somewhere and the unrighteous man his thoughts and if you remember in verse 8 ways and thoughts are combined together so the unrighteous part is also a way in other words if you are going to go god's way you can't go sin's way isaiah 35 the bible says to us in isaiah 35 verse 8 it says to us there it said and a highway shall be there and the way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass therein he said neither will those but it shall be for those sorry that are wayfaring men though fools they will not make mistake there there are individuals that are committed to pleasing god 
And despite what people look at their, as, as their inferior intellect, they still don't miss road. You see, holiness is the highway to enjoying the best of God. The best of God. Please hear this tonight. If you don't know anything, if you know nothing else but how to please God, you have succeeded. That is, if you don't know anything else, you don't know anything else, the only thing you know how to do is to please God, you have succeeded. He said, those that follow the pathway of holiness, they are wayfaring men, individuals that have the fear of God that walk in them. Have you not heard the Bible said, concerning those who fear God, he said he will show them his covenant. So there are things God will not show people. Please hear this and hear it very well tonight. You can be in a service and what changes somebody else's life is said, but you didn't hear it. Even when you tried to hear it, you didn't comprehend it. Because although the way was being unveiled, God is selective about who he shows. You see, when you look at in humans in, in the human in the human experience, if you put anything on screen, everybody who is watching will see it. But with God, he gives selective sight to those who please him. Is somebody getting it? Selective sight. That is, he's showing it and everybody is seemingly seeing it, but very few are really seeing it. He's saying it and everybody is seemingly hearing it, but very few are really hearing it. He said, only those who qualify as the clean, the wayfaring men, are the ones that will walk therein. My prayer tonight is that whatever may be contaminating your walk with God, may this night be a night of liberty for you. Yeah. You believe it, say loud, amen. Yeah. Number four is alignment with covenant terms. Alignment with covenant terms. Isaiah 55 again and verse 3, the Bible makes us understand there. It said, incline your ear and come unto me and hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. So there are covenants that God makes with men. A covenant is a spiritual deal, an agreement between God and a man. And it has specific terms. When you follow the terms of the covenant, you get the promises of the covenant. Hebrews chapter 6, verse, verse 16 to, to 18, the Bible tells us there. It said, men verily swear by the great and an oath is a confirmation to them, as a confirmation to them is the end of all strife. It said, God willing more abundantly to show to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it with an oath. That by two immutable things by which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. What is God saying to us there? He's simply saying, when it comes to how I agree with man, I've put two things in place. I've given my word and I've given my oath. Remember, God cannot lie. He doesn't have the ability to lie. Lying is not in his capacity. It is impossible for God to lie. But secondly, God said, to back up my unbreakable word, I have also given my oath. So that by two unsilenceable mute means silence two unsilenceable things it is impossible for god to lie it means that if i find the covenant if i find the terms of the covenant and i begin to act on the covenant the voice of the covenant will be sounding in heaven hello for example the covenant of prosperity has certain terms you engage in tithing, you engage in giving covenant, you put all of those terms to work. He said the covenant cannot be muted. The voice of my, of my word, God said, will be sounding. And the voice of my oath will be sounding. So in other words, in heaven, God is killed. God keeps hearing. Remember what you said. Remember what you said. Remember what you said. Remember what you said. Remember what you swore. Remember what you swore. Remember what you swore. So any man that keeps putting the terms of the covenant to work has everlasting remembrance in heaven. The covenant keeps speaking on his behalf as he engages the terms of it. That is why if you are going to make much out of your walk with God, discover 
all the responsibilities of scriptures. What has God said? There are people who continue to celebrate what God said he would do. But what did God say you would do? Because it's what he said you would do that determines what he would do. God is a master reactionist. That is, he reacts based on how you act. You take a step and God meets you with his step. The side of God is always guaranteed. The side of man is usually questionable. Those who keep the terms of the covenant will end up walking in the ways of God. So if you want to make the most out of your way with God, you must have a covenant mentality and align with the terms thereof. And how sure is the covenant? The Bible makes us understand, they said, except you can break my covenant with the day and the night, that there should be no day and night in a season. He said, then you'll be able to break my covenant with David, my servant, and with also the Levites, my priests. In other words, God is saying, the day you wake up and sun didn't show up, that day the covenant can break. But if the sun came up, if the night time came, then my covenant is still in force. Is somebody getting it? You know why God said so? He said, the same force I put behind what is holding the sun in its place is the same force behind the covenant I made with you. Please hear this and hear it very well. In case you don't understand the precision of God, we are told that there are nine planets around the sun, our own sun. And these nine planets, from the time of creation till now, not one has missed road to hit the other. We are told by scientists that if the earth tilts by one degree, part of it will burn and the other half will freeze. So from creation, there has been no tilt of one degree. So the earth has refused to burn, neither has it agreed to freeze because the covenant has kept it in line. God said that same force that is keeping the sun in its place, the nine planets in its place, is what I put behind my covenant with you. Is somebody getting it? Now think about how, how fallible man is. We have tried to create a lot of things as human beings and try to help them not to collide. For example, we created cars. And when we created cars, we made two lanes. We even put barriers in the middle of the lane to stop anyone from moving to the other side. But from the time of the creation of cars till now, they are still hitting each other. <laughs> because the ability of man cannot sustain or preserve his creation. But what God has agreed with you is sustained by the same force that is keeping the universe in motion. Say with me, my future is sure. Come on, say it like you mean it, my future is sure. Is why if a man that is walking in covenant terms look like he doesn't know what he's doing don't don't ignore him because his tomorrow is shorter than his today on the basis of what he's working on my prayer is that somebody's eyes somebody's ear somebody's heart will be open to the covenant tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ i said in the name of the lord jesus christ number five number five requirement is submission to spiritual authority submission to spiritual authority in the book of isaiah 55 verse 3 and 4 the bible said to us there he said incline your ear come unto me here and your soul shall live i will make an everlasting covenant even the sure mercies of david look at verse four, verse 4 behold i have given him for a witness to the people a leader and a commander to the people it is submission to authority spiritual authority that gives you access to continual walk in the way of God. Every time Mo the children of Israel despised Moses, they missed the way. But every time they submitted to him, they found the way. I like us to understand spiritual authority remains real forever. Our submission to spiritual authority has a lot to do with whether we keep walking in the way or not. The moment a person becomes bigger than the ones that are in front leading him, then he's on his way to disaster. Did you not hear what the scripture said in Jeremiah 6, 16? We saw it earlier. He said, stand in the way that you're already in the way. See and ask. 
you are in the way but see and ask for the old parts and walk therein and you will find rest for your souls never come to the point where you think because you have found the way you don't need a leader our submission to spiritual authority is our security in our walk with God our submission to spiritual authority is our security in our walk with God my prayer is that God will grant each one of us grace to sustain our submission to spiritual authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that is why the Bible tells us that they watch over our souls spiritual authority that's their duty to keep your soul in check so that you and I don't miss the way no one here will miss the way in the name of Jesus Christ very quickly tonight what are the proofs of following the ways of God we have seen how to find it we have seen the requirements for it now what are the proofs if I found the way how will it show what is the evidence we'll take four things here tonight before we conclude number one supernatural authority supernatural what supernatural authority Isaiah 55 the Bible said remember verse 4 and 5 verse 3 and 4 spoke about the sure message of David and how that he has given David as a commander over the people and look at what he said in verse 5 he said in verse 5 behold thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel for he has glorified thee you will call a nation that you did not know and the nation also did not know you but they will run to you that is supernatural authority you are commanding where others are begging on the basis of the discovery of the ways of God shout hallelujah he didn't say you will call a person not that you make phone call to a person you will call a nation and the nation that you did not know will run after you and they will come not because they know you but because God has glorified you I see that becoming somebody's experience here I said I see that becoming somebody's experience here I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so as we walk in the ways of God we enter into realms of spiritual authority where we begin to command where others are begging God's servant Bishop David Oedipo was traveling to a nation in Africa and on the way they discovered that they didn't have visa to the country they are about to land they are in the air when they discovered they didn't have the visa so he said call them and tell them I'm coming and they called and said well Bishop Oedipo is coming or we don't have a visa to your country I said okay wait a minute and they called back I said well he can land on personal recognition that's the person who picked didn't know who was coming but he said give me a minute I went to find out I said let him land on personal recognition he's free to enter is somebody getting it now let me say this if that will if if that will seem like oh maybe many people know him now many years ago he was entering to a country in the west you know and got to the border of the country going for a meeting and it, i think this may be early 90s or late 80s and discovered he didn't have visa for the country and arrived there and said well i'm on my way for a meeting in so so and so place they said where's your visa i'm sorry i forgot to get visa i don't have it i said okay next time get visa enter <laughs> you will call and a nation that did not know you will run onto you there are people hearing the sound of my voice tonight that people things nations that never knew you will run onto you <laughs> Is that not what Isaiah 60 said? He said, lift up your eyes and see all of them are gathering themselves together. They are coming to you. They are coming to you. They are coming from far. They are coming to you. 
He said, in fact, look, your gates shall be continually open. It will not be short day or night to bring the forces of the Gentiles. That will be somebody's experience here. I said, that will be somebody's experience here. While you are sleeping, people will be struggling to favor you. While you are walking, people will be running to meet with you. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. So, supernatural authority. Number two, termination of lack. Termination of lack. Termination of lack. He said in that Isaiah 55, 1 and 2, oh, come to the waters, all of you, come and buy without money. Buy without price why are you spending your money on that which is not bread and your labor on that which satisfies not hacking unto me diligently eat that which is good and your soul will delight itself in fatness in other words you you, you were struggling to make things happen but it says when you follow his ways suddenly the things you were struggling for begin to struggle for you he said your soul will delight itself in fatness that shall be your experience Amen. number three fulfillment of prophecy so shall my word be it will not return to me void but it will perform the thing that i have sent it for isaiah chapter 55 verse 10 and verse 11 so there is performance of prophetic word whatever god has spoken it begins to happen swiftly when you are following the ways of god and finally is supernatural wisdom the wisdom of God begins to answer for you as you follow the ways of God. Isaiah 55 and verse 8, the Bible makes it clear to us there. Isaiah 55 verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. So when you are following the ways of God, you begin following the thought pattern of God. You start thinking like God and all the depth, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his ways and his paths past finding out romans eleven thirty three. what is god saying to us there as we begin to follow the ways of god he upgrades us into realms of supernatural wisdom that will be our experience from now in the name of the lord jesus christ therefore tonight i welcome you into an adventure with the ways of the almighty rise your feet lift your hand to heaven let's give god thanks tonight let's give him thanks tonight let's give him thanks tonight father we give you thanks we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we give you adoration thank you for your word now ask god lord grace to put it to work i have give, i've gotten your instruction give me grace to put that word to work i receive that grace tonight i receive that grace tonight thank you father blessed be your name in jesus precious name we have prayed for everyone hearing my voice tonight this marks for you the turning of a new chapter the ways of god will destroy every force of the enemy over any life in jesus precious name give jesus a big hand this world